Oh, shit. Here we go again. I realize the irony of making this video after expressing my thoughts on personality theories like MBTI in the past, so myself and my friends will make this video brief. If you want my personal views regarding MBTI in particular, you can watch the video linked in the i card above or through the link in the video description. For now, I and my group classmates have a project to finish and have done some fairly extensive research regarding this topic, all to answer one major question. Should we be using MBTI for career counseling and development in 2022? First, a brief history of MBTI. MBTI, otherwise known as the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator, is a theory of personality built on the foundations of the personality theory from the mind of Swiss psychiatrist Carl Jung by Americans Catherine Cook Briggs and daughter Isabel Briggs Myers. Most people are familiar with the four-letter dichotomies of types like INFJ, ENFP, ENTP, and ISFJ, but are not as familiar with the cognitive functions. Each of the functions in MBTI, those being sensing, intuition, thinking, and feeling, are split along an introversion and extroversion axis, leading to the creation of eight separate functions. By adding the dichotomy of judging versus perceiving, or interpreting the ideas of the rational versus irrational dichotomy of Carl Jung's theory, Myers and Briggs took Jung's eight cognitive types and created a total of 16 categories. With that history out of the way, let's now focus on how MBTI relates to careers. MBTI has been utilized by numerous Fortune 500 companies to try and determine what preferences and predispositions employees will have towards different types of work as a means of trying to help employee retention and work satisfaction, considering the changes to the economy that have occurred within the last decade, shaping the economy of more prosperous nations from a contract service economy to a gig service economy, people are now more than ever in the past having to look for specific niches to earn enough income to provide a livable wage and ensure longevity. While this economic model is effective for some people with more outgoing and energetic personalities, this model does not fit everyone. Despite much of our economy having shifted in this direction, this is where models like MBTI come into play, as they help career counselors to determine where a client might fit best in our ever-evolving economy and market. As part of an exercise later in this presentation, I would like all members of the audience to evaluate the results from the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator and to look up what relevant jobs are associated with your type. This will serve a purpose later. For now, we need to focus on how it is utilized to help determine career paths and opportunities for young adults that are entering the workforce, and we will start doing that by comparing MBTI to its most popular mainstream rival, Big Five slash Sloan. From here, we should cover one of the personality systems that is most widely accepted by the psychological community, that being the system known as Big Five. Big Five is the moniker of a system that charts out human personality among five traits, those being extroversion, conscientiousness, openness to experience, agreeableness, and neuroticism. These traits were first devised as being the foundation for a system of personality by Ernest Tupes and Raymond Crystal in the 1960s, but was not accepted by an academic audience until the 1980s. Since then, numerous psychologists in the field have had their hand on developing versions of the Big Five personality traits and have developed their own version of the test. Popular examples include the open source Big Five personality test that exists through BigFiveTest.com, as well as one of the more developed ones by infamous psychologist Jordan B. Peterson. The benefits of this system when compared to MBTI is that it is more flexible regarding categorization of people and has more reliability and validity than MBTI when compared side by side. People tend to not deviate much from one test to another regarding Big Five. Big Five is good for indicating general traits within people and can be helpful for careers. However, the drawbacks to the system stem from the lack of more decisive categories as well as a lack of direct correlations for career counseling. The purpose for systems like MBTI and Big Five are not directed at career counseling, so a system that lacks decisive categories and focus on careers will not suit career counseling well. However, from here, I will be passing the microphone to my group members to speak on and compare other personality theories to MBTI and Big Five, starting with Gilbert. Next, we will look over the Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Inventory 2, also known as the MMPI 2. When I initially read its title, I thought, why the number two at the end? Where's the first one? I learned the MMPI has been around since its publishing in the early 1940s. The MMPI was created by clinical psychologist Stark Hathaway and neuropsychiatrist J.C. McKinley. Both clinicians worked for the University of Minnesota. Since then, it has remained unchanged until our Western society 
in the late 1960s and early 1970s, started its cultural revolution of sorts amongst minority populations, and the MMPI was no longer relevant. Furthermore, the MMPI's questions were centered around a small town Minnesota population who were predominantly Caucasian. This did not represent the rest of the United States population. Mental health clinicians and researchers wanted its revision to reflect the current state of society happening in the early 70s in the United States culture and remove content deemed questionable that was assuming of a primarily religious and heterosexual population, thus excluding minorities in the process. The times were changing, the MMPI was not. Unfortunately, it still took about 15 years for the MMPI's revisioning until 1989. As a result, the MMPI 2 was created. Let's get technical and dry, like shredded wheat cereal. The MMPI 2 inventory was to be used within the medical, employment, and mental health environments. It consists of 567 items. These items are presented in the true or false fashion and will report on a person's psychological frame of mind. It generally takes about 60 to 90 minutes to complete it. The mental health professional administering the MMPI 2 will be a psychologist or psychiatrist that has been trained in its delivery, supervision, and scoring. In my opinion, the beauty of this inventory is there are no wrong answers. That's my kind of test. Allow me to go over a couple of drawbacks to the MMPI 2. The inventory can only be administered and scored by a psychologist or psychiatrist, whereas the MBTI has a handful of people like licensed professional counselors, mental health coaches, therapists, etc. that can administer it and thus has a higher accessibility. Therefore, a patient may be discouraged to take on such an inventory if they do not possess the knowledge of how to get themselves to a psychologist or psychiatrist. Secondly, as I have previously mentioned, the MMPI-2 has 567 items that can be answered in about 60 to 90 minutes, compared to the MBTI that has about 93 questions that can be completed within 25 to 30 minutes. I understand the completion of such inventories is dependent on the individual taking it. But I think it is fair to say that it can be a daunting inventory to have someone take a lengthy test like the MMPI-2. Personally, if I'm in a state of anxiety and depression and I'm told this test has 567 questions that need to be completed and I have no education on what that means, I might feel defeated before I even got started on the damn thing. From here, Gregory will go over Holland's theory as it pertains to career counseling. She will also go over the benefits and drawbacks when compared to MBTI. Holland's theory. The idea that people tend to exemplify one of a few vocational personality types first occurred to Holland when he was serving in the army as a classification interviewer. Holland kept this notion in mind during graduate school. While there, his research included the usage of the MMPI where Holland concluded that personality is linked with important individual constructs. The Holland system assesses people's work, interests, and aptitudes within six basic areas. Realistic, investigative, artistic, social, enterprising, and conventional. This is commonly abbreviated as RIASEC. Holland, along with most of the research on this theory, focused on the fact that the RIASEC interests are predictors of the kind of occupation a person chooses. Some of the drawbacks include the considerable direct and indirect evidence that Holland's theory does not adequately assess some elements of identity that matter in vocational choice. In an era where people are encouraged to consider issues of work-life balance, quality of life, lifelong learning, and navigating personal journeys through the world of work, it may be that the basis on which matching is done shifts from what can I do and what would I like doing to what do I want to achieve and how do I want my life to be. One of the benefits is that the Holland's theory has survived almost 50 years of empirical scrutiny and remains the standard and reference for most major instruments. In comparison to MBTI, a similarity that can be noted is that after identifying your top two or three interest themes, the letters can be combined in a way like the Myers-Briggs to form a multi-letter code. This code can then be used to aid your search for your best career match. In contrast to each other, the Myers-Briggs measures your personality preferences. People tend to have differential preferences for certain modes of coping and developing, which they must exercise to do well and feel well in not only their work but in life situations. Holland's model is premised on a match between individuals and occupations. 
Holland proposed that a good match between a person's interests and occupation type is a critical concept underlying career satisfaction and longevity. And lastly, we will focus on the Russo-Hudson Enneagram type indicator, also known as the Ready. We will be discussing the history of the Enneagram, which is a system of personality that was developed by clean psychiatrist Claudio Naranco and was based on the work of Bolivian psychospiritualistic Oscar Ichazo. The Enneagram consists of nine core types that describe the trauma and vices of individual people as well as their core desires. Each type is either accompanied by a wing, which consists of one of the two neighboring numbers on the Enneagram, or is considered balanced between the two wings. Instinctual variants are also an important part of this system, as they describe the instinctual stackings of either traits involving self-preservation, social, and sexual or one-on-one. -on -one. People will have one of the six instinctual stackings, those being SO and SX, SX and SO, SP and SO, SO and SP, SP and SX, or SX and SP with one of the three instincts serving as a blind spot for the individual. Numerous practitioners have developed their own variants of this typing system. We will be focusing on the version presented by our practitioners, Rizzo and Hudson, and their test known as the Rizzo-Hudson Enneagram Type Indicator, abbreviation known as RHETI. Some benefits and drawbacks of the Enneagram is that this system is now seen as one of the more beneficial and slowly more accepted personality type systems. The Enneagram was designed to d explore and aim to understand how suffering affected us as children and how we would later change and adapt as adults. It offers paths of growth and an explanation for why we sometimes regress as it pertains to the lower and higher stages of health that we experience. This can be helpful for us as it pertains to our careers, knowing what career we would be best suited for based on our Enneagram. These cannot be taken as certainties as to what career a person might be able to do best. For example, type 8 might not be considered great to work with others in telemarketing, and a type 9 might not be considered great to work as a referee. That does not mean that such career options are impossible. Other limitations of the Enneagram are used as tools that aim to diagnose people based on archetypes of traits related to personality disorders. Since Rizzo and Hudson created their adaption of the model and other practitioners, such as Beatrice Chestnut, providing interpretation of the model, it is a model that does not lend itself to test well. Despite the RHETI and IVQ existing, the RHETI and the Enneagram pose as a compelling alternative to the standard that is the MBTI. With this, we will refer to the question at the beginning of this presentation, meaning should we use MBTI in 2022? Should we use MBTI in 2022? Well, we've gone over how these theories, such as Holland's theory, have long considered to have been great standards by which to help clients discover great career paths through career counseling, MBTI is yet to show as much promise. However, this presentation is not focused on Holland's theory. Our focus has been on the Myers-Briggs type indicator and determining whether it is a viable personality theory that we should not only consider, but prioritize for career counseling. As we have demonstrated thus far, there are more viable alternatives to MBTI that should be considered before considering the MBTI as so many companies already have, and three reasons as to why you should not use it are as follows. Number one, MBTI lacks reliability and validity and varies heavily between tests. Number two, the evidence validity of other tests are more reliable and more useful as they pertain to careers. And thirdly, MBTI and Carl Jung's work were not intended to be utilized to categorize people into boxes that determine what we can and cannot do. What I mean by these three points is this. MBTI lacks validity due to the unreliable results of the test varying depending on the mood of the person taking the instrument. Other instruments are more reliable and less variable to mood shifts regarding the questions they ask. And lastly, Jung's work was focused on transcending restricting labels and dichotomies, not on trying to create boxes to confine people to work that they are not satisfied with and therefore limiting their potential. Our conclusion is that MBTI is a useful instrument for helping someone with self-discovery, but not so much with finding or maintaining a fruitful career, at least compared to other instruments.
Thank you so much for watching. Special thanks to all of my group members who helped volunteer their voices and efforts to making this video. It was a group effort through and through. All the references and useful links will be found down in the description below, and I recommend people take the test linked before and evaluate whether the job recommendations for their type would be considered accurate. With all of that said, thank you very much for watching. Take care.